this is your former anime girl of the year in 2022. Let's check and see how she's doing now. Oh, holy shit. My bad. George, a female character, completely won the hearts of every Dijen, I mean, anime fan in the world, mainly because of the fact that she's presented in a way that doesn't scream, I'm only here for fan service. That's how most anime women are presented. But in her opening in 2022, it was pretty balanced between her being a spaced out mother to a badass assassin, but definitely felt like she wasn't as fleshed out as she could be. And she mainly just had some wholesome character moments that made you go, oh, you know, she's pretty neat. Yeah. That's not the case in season two. The Cruise Ark and Spikes family, I believe, is over. Sorry, I'm not a manga reader. I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm not a manga reader. I should just pack up the channel right now. But it's wrapped up. In this time, Yor has transitioned from a good character to one that connects with the audience in a deeper way than before. Oh, and, and she does a lot of stuff like this too. Yeah, and a little bit of that. And some of this. Mitigating the position of Lloyd and Anya may have seemed like a risk because Yor didn't seem like she was good enough to stand on her own. Besides a few assassin scenes here and there, I thought that too. I was completely wrong. So here's what happened. Most anime set up characters that have big moments through an insane amount of buildup, but not in this situation. You're immediately thrown into Yor defending someone with a pretty simple premise on the cruise as well as she has to avoid Lloyd and Anya. Except Spike's family throws in a lot deeper elements. To begin with, Yor's already questioning if she wants to be an assassin or not before the mission even starts and this kind of doubt for a character to have isn't really common in an anime like spy x family it's sort of like lloyd is a spy anya is a telepath and yours an assassin and you're just supposed to sit there and be like yeah that's what it is nothing wrong with that no extra motivation needed i'll just take it and go and most of the time when anime characters are confused and lost it can be really really annoying and it's rarely refreshing and the audience is sitting there like when can we move on from this we know they're gonna get over this hump we know that they're gonna get their powers back or whatever it may be and it sucks but the fact that spike's family is all about this fake family coming together and getting the feelings of a real family it makes sense and fits the tone as well as you're getting characterization for a character that you liked before and now you're getting that depth that you've been wanting the entire time even though yor can kill an army and probably lloyd all the enemies power scaler just lost her shit yeah lloyd has a 0.03 percent reaction time as ads drawn on manga page 14 volume shut the fuck up bro i cannot believe power scalers are a real thing anyways the reason it makes sense in spike's family is because even though yor is ruthless she's portrayed in this light that makes her seem normal worried about her kid at school what people think of her at work not being self-sufficient but it honestly just makes a lot of sense to the point where even you the audience is questioning why yor does what she does i mean to be honest for a majority of season one we saw her do no assassin stuff she seems to be the strongest assassin there by a landslide and she's also having a good time back home the audience is mainly just questioning when is the assassin plotline gonna come in so to see an airhead like your I'm sorry. To see a character like Yor questioning it already lets you know that this was going to be a character journey for Yor. It's all supplemented through the fact that the person that Yor is being a bodyguard for is a mother who's thrown into a bad situation who has a kid of her own and immediately you see the connection. You're like, I know where this is going to go. Now, although this seems relatively serious with this kid going to die and this wife going to die and this and that, it's still Spike's family. At the end of the day, you got this weirdo with like 50,000 cameras bugged throughout the cruise. You have the Avenger of Assassins trying to kill the target and the of course the overpowered old guy in anime it's still a classic and it's still a vibe but it just works because spike's family has that tone that can do anything and this is all double downed on later but you're throughout this whole premise is trying to save this mother and her child whilst being hunted throughout the cruise and it really created some incredible sequences one of my favorites was the scene in the masquerade ball for you you're having to navigate through a herd of assassins to get her clients down the deck while not making too much noise it was sick and then anya notices your thoughts as she gets closer so she then has to go to distract Lloyd by making him question all of his decisions as a father. She had that man turned up. He was about to just end it all. He was feeling more worthless than any other character in the whole series. And then Yor and this crazy looking guy have a badass fight in the middle of a cruise and then Anya has to play it off like it was all a circus act. That episode just perfectly encapsulated what it is to watch Spy's family. The vibe, the animation style, and the tone of the series allows them to have fun big set pieces that have pretty wholesome undertones 
tones. And to speak to the animation style a bit, it's very rare for something to be truly unique nowadays. Between the Mappa effect and everything kind of just looking samey. Bike's family looks like a kid drawing on a piece of paper, but it also looks smooth and honestly really sick for the fight sequences. And in general, it's just a vibe. Man, I don't know shit about animation. I always just gotta be like, it's a vibe this, it looks cool that, ooh ah. I'm sorry. But the sequence may have been sick for Spike's family, but Yor is about to go even crazier. Yor ends up having one big final fight where all of the assassins are trying to jump her, like literally pull up on her on some moderate shit. Like she's about to go throw down, bring down a meteor. She has to go berserk. Guts is probably about to sit there and run away. She's about to go completely ruthless and kill everyone. And she does. Almost. The two head assassins managed to injure her really bad. And it's honestly the only time we've really seen her struggle with killing people at any point in the series. And it's tied into her doubt because she's trying to fight safe. And this is important because if she gets hurt, she's not going to be able to hide it from Anya and Lloyd. Thus, her organization is going to have to make her leave that family because they're obviously going to be like, why the fuck are you stabbed like a thousand times? And that leads her to having a moment where she seriously considered giving up and dying until she has an epiphany, remembering her reasoning to live and her purpose. This is one of the reasons people love anime because real life examples can be illustrated in such a goofy and simplistic theme. It's merely illustrating the feeling of being lost and purposeless and the devil on your shoulder telling you to give up and seeing how direction and passion can empower you to strive forward in the face of doubt is the message they were trying to convey because your just turns to a rabid animal upon thinking about her family and her purpose. Unironically, even compared to JJK, this was some of the best fighting scenes of the year, not because of animation blowing you away visually, but stylistically in the tone of the series and how it just fits, it makes you understand. This is different and she is really, really pissed and she does not want anyone to take her away from her family. After Yor kills them, Lloyd disarms some bombs, and Anya does some damage herself, Yor can finally return to her family, and it's so refreshing to see a female character in anime not be 1. completely annoying, 2. just there for fan service, or 3. just there to be saved by the protagonist. But Yor is representative of finding yourself, whilst being a badass assassin in a complicated situation, and perfectly fitting into Spike's family as a whole. A story that's supposed to remind you of your childhood, a story that makes you feel warm inside, and honestly, anime needs that unique style nowadays. Everything is becoming really similar and so many things have been done before and Spike's family with Yor, with Lloyd, with Anya are trying to be different and at times it may fail because at the end of the day it is a slice of life and let's be honest, slice of life when they experiment, they really try a lot of different things and some of it can work out, some of it can't. Actually creating a unique experience with a slice of life shonen with a sick animation style that's unlike anything out right now, while having your an assassin mother, Lloyd a spy father, and Anya a telepath kid, and Bond. I can't believe they pulled this arc off without having Bond. Bon is the coldest character in anime. Gocho doesn't have shit on Bon. But with that being said, Spike's family continues to just elevate and elevate. And although the start of season two, I was like, what the f fuck am I watching? The cruise arc absolutely delivered and it lived up to the hype. Everyone was talking about the cruise arc being the moment that Spike's family and Yor were really going to click with you. And honestly, it's true. The cruise arc perfectly, perfectly encapsulated what it means to be a slice of life shonen and what it means to watch spikes family so if you want to watch a video on an anime i would not recommend check out this one on the 100 girlfriends anime and if you enjoyed this video leave a like subscribe and don't forget where to stand started we're gonna stay consistent and i will see you in the next video